Welcome back to another episode of What is This Weapon? I'm Ian McCollum, the new Keeper of Firearms here at the British Royal Armouries, and we have a very cool firearm for you for this week's episode. Ian? Lights. Welcome back, everybody. Jonathan here with what appears to be, well, it is, a Sten gun. Sten Mark II, to be precise. We're not really here to talk about the history of the Sten gun. That's That's been done. Um, this is, in fact, another collaboration with our friends at World of Guns. Um, you might have been able to guess that if you've seen the previous episode on uh, of this sort of series within a series based on how much of this gun is missing. So I was I was raving about how good World of Guns is last time and for people like me uh, in terms of learning the, the inner details of how firearms work, even if you have access to the real thing, and that we don't have cutaways for certain things. Well, we do have a cutaway for the Sten gun, which means we can sort of do a World of Guns in real life to an extent and try to explain here how it works. And then you can go away and try the World of Guns version and probably do a better job than me, but we'll give it a go. So I think the first thing to say is it's easier to make a fully automatic weapon than it is a semi-automatic weapon because, or at least with this style or this type of submachine gun, which is what it is, we called it a machine carbine in Britain, but submachine gun is what it is. Very simple. If you haven't come across these before, you can see more so than usual, the big coil spring inside here. In fact, I have a spare one here. <laughs> Just a big wire spring and the end cap there. And you have a big heavy steel bolt. That's the heart of this system. You don't have, like an AR-15 or an AK platform, anything locking it shut. Or a Lee Enfield rifle for that matter. Or a Bren gun with a tilting bolt. You don't have anything that's positively locking the bolt into the back of the barrel. You need that with high pressure ammunition, rifle ammunition, or assault rifle ammunition, um, so-called. With pistol caliber ammunition, you can get away with a big, heavy lump of steel and a spring. And it all works off that. So it keeps itself shut for long enough for the bullet to head down the barrel, nearly all the pressure to be contained. And then by the time the, the case has pushed back and projected, sometimes this is called case projection, projected back the bolt against spring pressure, it's dropped, everything's dropped to a safe level, the gun won't blow up, it won't hurt you, it won't lose efficiency, the bullet won't lose velocity. Bolt then comes back, compresses the spring, you can see that of course in World of Guns, um, and you can see it on the real gun. If I can try to show you this way around, take advantage of the actual cutaway. So obviously I am manually operating it, pulling it back against spring pressure. So you imagine that's being done by the fired cartridge, something that World of Guns illustrates with an actual virtual cartridge and case ejection as well. So I'm from this angle, it's actually very difficult to, to replicate that. So let's do it like this. Because it needs to be a strong spring and a heavy bolt to keep that gun shut for as long as possible, or as long as necessary, I should say. It then comes back and stops reasserts a little bit and then stops. What's it stopping on? Well, we're on automatic mode. This is our fire selector marked A for automatic, pushed across through the gun. You can see it from this angle. So semi-automatic, automatic, semi-auto, or auto and single shot. Uh, sorry, R for repetition uh, on the stand gun and on most British firearms. There's no S because the safety is not part of that, that system. I'll explain in a moment why that works that way. But the very, very basic, on automatic, all that's happening is what I've just described. So it's held up on what's called a sear, and you can see that through this hole here. Little bit of a sidebar on the word sear. It's a very old English, literally old English word, uh, meaning plowshare. S-C-E-A-R originally. You'll see that spelling up to the 19th century. And that's because in a flintlock, or uh, yeah, certainly in a flintlock, it was shaped like a little plowshare. It's no longer shaped like a plowshare, but it does the same job, and people have forgotten why it's called that. Usually the way with etymology, but anyway. 
So hopefully you can see that thing that the bolt is stopping on, held back, ready to fly forward, pick up around, fire it, and then blow back to that position. That's why we call the system blow back. Case projection is another term. Blow back's the favored term. So pulling the trigger drops that sear out of the way off the ledge on the back of the bolt. The bolt slams forward, fires around, and if it was around, obviously, comes back to this position, case goes flying out, and an automatic, bear in mind, we're on automatic, for as long as I hold the trigger and there is ammunition in the magazine, it goes forward, fires another round, comes back, ejects the case, slams another round into the chamber and fires it, ejects the case. Does that for as long as you have ammunition and you hold the trigger down. What happens if you let go of the trigger? Well, hopefully, again, see my face through there, I let go, the sear is left, it pops back up into that tubular receiver and it stops the bolt back here. They could have stopped there. The German MP40 does. It's automatic only. That's why I say it's easier to make an automatic firearm of this basic blowback nature. You need the trigger so that you don't have to just cock it and fire 32 rounds at, the, at a German or whoever. Um, and hope for the best and then slam in another magazine. You need that trigger mechanism like we've had since the 1400s to control the fire of the weapon. And it's all it's doing is stopping the bolt. Talked about the ledge. There's the ledge on a different bolt. So it sits in the gun like this. Cartridge is on the front of the bolt when it's picked up out of the magazine. The spring fits over the back there. So this really is, you just need the tube, well, two tubes, the barrel and the receiver. And then this setup, it's so simple. It's sort of one up from a slam gun, if you know what a slam gun is. Just two, two steel pipes with a bit of ammunition in the middle and a firing pin, obviously. And the firing pin on this is a fixed little pointy steel bit, crushes the cap, fires the cartridge and starts that whole process going. So that's the, that's the basics. But the beauty of both World of Guns <laughs> and the actual cutaways is you can see that happening. You may have noticed that ledge. So that's what the sear catches. That's how the bolt is held back, ready to fly forward. That's not a cutaway. That's always cutaway. There's always a path here where there is no ledge. So this is enough to do the job, to hang up on the sear and, do the, and fire the gun. Why is there a cutaway there? Well, that's to allow for semi-automatic fire. We have the trigger. Straightforward, everyone knows what a trigger is. A spring to make sure it flicks back into position. And we have a trigger bar, or in this case, a tripping lever, which is this thing, connecting the top of the trigger to the sear that I was talking about before. So do that again where you can see it. So all that's doing is pushing that sear down. So that's that bar connects the trigger to the sear. So before we finish explaining how this actually very simple thing works, but it's so it's so hard to, to get your head around, I know. Um, we should say actually the, the the first video in this uh, series we're doing with World of Guns, we've we've had a tremendous response from people who are not subscribed. Loads of people who aren't subscribed and enjoyed that video. Please do, as the cliche goes, not only like but hit the subscribe button because if you liked the video on the HK416, I'm pretty sure you're liking this one as well and there are more of this nature coming and we do other stuff on this channel as well so please do like and subscribe thank you so in automatic mode which is what we've been talking about that's all it does that's literally all it does and that cutaway means that this bar is not also knocked down out of the way what am i, what am I talking about well let's move it to repetition, single shot, semi-automatic. That tripping lever is now moved across into the path of that ledge. So that's now doing two jobs. It's with the sear firing the gun, and it's also giving this a thwack. So this is the end of that tripping lever, the end of the trigger bar. It's pushing down on it as it comes forward. You can see that happen. So, so on the sear, just like automatic, we, we pull the trigger, that pushes the trigger bar, tripping lever forward, which pushes the sear down, just like before. Bolt flies forward, 
But then, can you see through that second hole? There. That same ledge is now, because it's in the way, able to disconnect the trigger. So now my trigger is dead. My trigger is not interfacing with the rest of the gun. So there's a reason why they've cut, cut two oval holes here and here. One to show you the sear, which is how it's firing in, in either mode. And then the one at the front to show you the front of that tripping lever getting pushed down out of the way by that ledge. Because it's been physically moved over into the path of that same ledge of steel. So it's, it's now getting released off one thing and hitting another thing. Whereas in automatic, it literally just works off the sear. It doesn't worry about this lever. And what that does is, so off the sear, forward, trips the lever, that disconnects the trigger from the whole system. So it's no longer holding the sear down. In fact, if I do it again, you'll hopefully see the sear pops up, ready to catch the bolt. So pull the trigger, sear drops down. On automatic, it would stay down, but that thing, that ledge hits the tripping lever, disconnects the trigger, and up pops that sear at the back there. One more time, off the sear, forward, hits the tripping lever. Now this time, look at the bottom of those two ovals. Dis it's, it's popped up the sear, and so on the next round, it comes back. Now it's caught. That is semi-automatic. And so the trip, what we call the, or the, Brit the British call the tripping lever, it's a disconnector. Every semi-automatic firearm has to have a disconnector. And when you, if you ever pull a trigger on, on a firearm and it goes click, that's usually what that means. That is it disconnecting so that it can then fire, it can then be re-engaged to, to pull the trigger a second time. Otherwise, holding a trigger down is just going to make it fire continuously, or at least we'll, with a system like this, that's how it works. So, a bit like with our previous video, that's a lot to take in. Quite hard to explain, even with a beautifully cutaway piece like this. It's so much easier to play around on World of Guns. You can spin it around, you can cut it in half, you can put it in X-ray mode, you can delete parts that are getting in the way, so you can really understand how this thing works. Better than me explaining it, better than a, than a period um, Second World War British training pamphlet trying to explain it to you. Um, even better is both together, which I'm very <laughs> fortunate and privileged to be able to, uh, to do. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We really do appreciate it. Um, do remember, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And of course, we always appreciate a like click as well. It goes a long way. Um, and you can come and visit our real life museums if you'd like to do that. We also have, if you'd like to see these videos uh, without advertisements, you can go to or download the app or go to the website, History of Weapons and War. And a lot of the other um, firearm and military history based YouTube channels are also over there with something extra to offer you, whether that's um, no ads or even extra content in some cases as well. So please do go and check that out, see if it's something you'd like to, to sign up for. But you'll always be able to see um, the videos here for free, of course. See you again next time.